What's going on, Metallurgist? Smarty here from Heavy Metallurgy with another review for you. Um, there's no surprise that I'm a fan of German heavy metal. Uh, if you're a fan of this channel, you've heard me talk about it ad nauseum. <laughs> um, but what do I think of the veteran band Primal Fear? Well, I guess you just have to stick around for a second and find out. All right, I'm here today to talk about the 14th full-length album by Germany's Primal Fear. The name of the album is Code Red. It is released on September 1st on Atomic Fire Records. Um, Primal Fear was formed in 1997-ish, around that time. That's when their debut album came out uh, by Ralph Sheepers, who was leaving Gamma Ray. Uh, for all those who, who don't know who Gamma Ray is, it is a band started by Halloween's Kai Hansen. And also some members of the band Sinner got together and formed Primal Fear. Matt Sinner being the bass player slash backup vocal guy, uh, one of the more known names who also used to be or worked for Nuclear Blast back in the day. But um, this band got together to create traditional German heavy metal. Um, and for those of you maybe unfamiliar with this band, uh, what can you expect from a Primal Fear album? Well, chances are strong that there is a flaming eagle on the cover. Uh, two albums ago, you get this. And, uh, you know, I got this little box set here, too, where there's a bunch of eagles. Some of them are on fire. Some of them are not. Uh, so if your buddy says, oh, you need to go check out that new Primal Fear album, go down the store. It's the one with the, the eagle on it. You're going to need a little bit more information. But uh, for those of you unfamiliar with this band, think Judas Priest ran through a German heavy metal filter. It's the quickest breakdown I can give you for this band. The song construction is very well based in a formula. Uh, you've got twin guitar harmonies, um, predominant palm muted crunches for the verse lines, and Let's face it, Ralph Sheepers is a fantastic vocalist. Um, he's got a really good mid-range, and his higher-up falsetto screaming style is very um, tuned, well-tuned, and melodious. The guy can sing his ass off. And I, and you know, like Alan from Heavy Metallurgy, he's not a big fan of Ralph's vocals. Don't really get it because I think he's a fantastic singer. In fact. I guess the rumor is at one point he tried out for the replacement job uh, for Rob Halford and Judas Priest. Didn't get the job, but um, he could have. I mean, he's that good. He's that good of a singer. Later day, Primal Fear, we've got a three guitar attack. You've got Tom Nauman, Magnus Carlson, and Alex Beirat on guitars. Do you really need three guitarists? Uh, on record, probably not, but... Um, from a live standpoint, the amount of twin guitar harmonies this band throws at you, you're not going to have as many holes in the sound field live if you have three guitar players. You got a guy holding down the chord progression while the two guys are harmonizing with each other. It's it's a good fit uh, for the live medium, and this is a band that plays live. In fact, many years ago I saw them here. They've played in America. I don't know if it was a one-off show. It was at a metal fest, Milwaukee Metal Fest. But what you get with Primal Fear is tested and true heavy metal um i've got what do we have here six of their albums out of a bunch they've got 14 of them so i've got just under half of their catalog and i return to these on occasion i do enjoy them um but what sets code red apart from the rest of their catalog why did i feel so compelled to review this album well a, we want to give you a good swath of metal from power metal to death and black metal, you know, all fields of metal in between. That is that is a goal here on this channel, first and foremost. Secondly, second time through this record, I kind of fell in love with it, not going to lie. I think it's a really well-written album. It's This is two albums ago. This one is good, um, but the new one is very catchy. I'm a sucker for an earworm. I really am, and... Primal Fear really brings the quality earworms, the the strong hooks. Um, I kind of know what's coming before it gets there. Uh, their sound is very well. The songs lead, they're heading towards 
that impactful pre-chorus and then the, the chorus. Um, if the pre-chorus doesn't sell you, the chorus is going to and vice versa. There's some songs on here where the pre-chorus is the, the cook, the, the leading edge to the song. It's good. It's really good. So um, let's let's get into this record a little bit. Code Red is produced fantastically. I did not look into who recorded it. It's got a good modern production. Uh, you can hear everything. It doesn't sound overly synthetic. It's got power. It's got edge to it. It's got, um, even though it's obviously very digital, it doesn't feel suffocatingly plastic, if that makes any sense. We're going to start off with the leadoff track here. Another Hero. Easy to process and a heavy metal crunch a la modern Judas Priest. Uh, it kept me interested until that soaring and endlessly catchy chorus. I mean, Ralph Sheepers, his strength is whether he's singing mid-range or singing in his higher register, the power is there. He's got the power. It doesn't diminish. You can tell he's not faking his way through it. He's singing from the tip of his toes. <laughs> it's, it's just completely belted out power and um, clarity. Power and clarity. You can understand everything he has to say. And his melodic choices are very strong. Have I heard them before? Sure, he is not reinventing the wheel here. But what he is doing is um, selling each song with power and conviction. And again, I'll reiterate the fact that the pre-choruses and the choruses are the selling points for most of this album. I mean, the lead, the, the riffs leading up to the songs, they're all fine and good. A lot of power or palm muted crunching. Um, but that payoff when the pre-chorus and the chorus hits, it always sells, typically always sells the song. Next song, Bring That Noise. A well-written second song that relies on the overall buildup and eventual fantastic pre-chorus. The pre-chorus on this song completely sells the song for me really uh, a lot of life in it a lot of life and energy in those vocal lines deep in the night it feels like a mid-paced headbanger reminiscent of accept you're not going to stray far away from an accept vibe as well when you're dealing with a German heavy metal band that came from the 90s that uh, very much a, uh, a point of their influences for sure. As I woke up, it was real. And your behavior, to truth, you After that, we have Cancel Culture. This is the single in the video for the album. Um, you have very topical lyrics about mob mentality. It's a headbanger of a track displaying the energy and passion for heavy metal these veterans still possess. Really love those verse riffs and that lead up to the chorus. But the chorus and the lead, <laughs> the, the chorus and the lead up to that chorus, again, sell sell that song for me. I'll put a clip in here, but also go check out the video for it. Great song. It's a very it was a good smart choice to pick this one for the album because I think it represents what this record is about. If you don't like this song, you're probably not going to like the record. We're going with uh, Play a Song Next. Uh, a feel-good banger of a track with uplifting lyrics and that golden higher register vocal range of Sheepers. Super catchy song. Again, we're... Ralph is up in that higher register. It's got, it's a playful feeling. It's um, playful, memorable, catchy, a lot of power. He never lets go on that power. It's great. The world is on fire and their gods have failed. Um, more of the same. But a bit heavier and more in a mid-range uh, slog of these tracks. There's a bit of snarl in um, Ralph's voice as well. He's got a little, he adds a little bit of fry to that uh, clean tone 
to give the songs a little bit of edge. The thing that's really cool here is we're what, eight songs into the album at this point, and it's still holding my attention, which is a win. A win situation for an album of this, like this, an album like this. Then we go to Steel Melter. It could have been a later day Judas Priest track. It has the same feel and formula, kind of mid-paced. Steel Melter is in the chorus. The actual word Steel Melter is in the chorus. So could have been a Judas Priest song from their later era. At this point, I'm, I'm looking at the track listing and I'm amazed my attention has been held um, this long. And the fact that I keep wanting to come back to the album is also important. But we get to track 10. It's called Forever. And um, I'm just going to put this out here as a discredit to this one thing about this record I have to say is... The Germans love their power ballads. I don't know what it is. Well, I do know what it is. I'm going to blame the Scorpions and the success of the song Winds of Change. Everybody remember that? If you lived through that era, every time you turned on MTV, there was uh, Winds of Change was on there. The Fall of the Berlin Wall and, you know, all that stuff. Very powerful song. Well, with uh, Primal Fears Forever, let's see here. We got orchestration accompaniment in the background. Check. Uh, lyrics that say, take my hand and I'll hold you tight. Check. Uh, soulful singing and airy guitar lines. Check. You just get the, the feeling when they went in, you know, you got the orchestration, you got all this emotional lyrics, you know, trying to uplifting type of, you can do it. Uh, I'm here to help you through the hard times folk. You can kind of tell that, uh, when they went in, they're like, this isn't the most important song on the album. This means a lot to us. You know, <laughs> fine. I just, um, I really could have lived without this track. At the end of the day, it's well done. It's well composed. It's been done. It's been done. It's been heard. Take my hand. I'll hold you the very last song, uh, Fearless. It's a heavy ending. But uh, lacks the wow factor, and it isn't as banger of a closing track as I would have liked. If I was in the band, I want to go out with a banger. It's just kind of a mid-pace romp to the end. So, I mean, really, my main complaint is here, take off the ballad, take off the last track, and end on Raged by Pain. That would have been a solid ending to this album. Having said that, we have got an album that's got a bunch of songs on it. It's a lengthy record, and... I've come back to, I've listened to this probably a good 10 times leading up to this review. A, I wanted to absorb it to make sure I could uh, properly convey my thoughts on it, but I wanted to listen to it. That was the, that's the key thing. And I guess that's the biggest selling point for me, for you to check out this record is the fact that I like this record. I think it's really good. And if you're a fan of heavy metal, I really don't see why you wouldn't like this record either. If you're, you know, a casual onlooker when it comes to heavy metal. Maybe you're just getting into it or you're worn to death in black metal or whatever. I don't think um, Code Red is going to change your mind when it comes to Primal Fear or wanting to get into this band's discography. I mean, I've got a good chunk of their discography. As they come up cheaply in my line of sight, I might pick up what I'm missing, but I'm probably going to get Code Red. I think it's a good album. And hopefully after this review and you're a metalhead, you'll check it out too. But uh, that's it. If you like what we're doing here, guess what? Myself and my colleagues got a bunch of reviews on here. More coming every week. Um, added on a few new people to help out with that as well. So maybe there'll be even more coming your way. Stick with us and um, keep coming back to Heavy Metallurgy for more metal critiques and more streams and more topics. We appreciate all of you. Thank you so much. And we will see you on the next review. Take care. Between